Hello YouTube, this is Frugal and as promised, I'm going to take a look here at the X55's software. Now I know a lot of people in the past have leveled complaints at SST, which is Cytex programming software for their complex sticks. I got bad news for you, unfortunately. The X55 software is still SST, it's just reskinned. But, before you start watching this video, don't start watching this video. I'm finding that there's quite a lot of depth to it, and it will get the job done in pretty spectacular fashion. So you can see already it's reskinned, shows the X55 here, shows news from Facebook and various other social media sources for Cytec on that homepage. We don't care about that. What we care about is in here, programming, and in here, settings. Let me show you settings first of all. If you click on settings and click on the joystick, you can see here that there are three axes. Obviously, there's X, and there's Y. Everything works the way it should. Hang on, let's click on Y. There we go. There's Y. You need to click on the axis to see it move. And rudder. Now, many people use rudder pedals. I'm using Cytex Combat pedals. If you are, if that is one of you, sorry, if you are one of those people, you can disable the rudder so it's not giving you an errant input that you're accidentally binding in a sim. The way you do that is very simple. Just select the axis and then click on the green arrow here. In fact, actually not. Click on the uh, padlock down the bottom right here. There we go. It will turn yellow and that axis is no longer functioning. You can see that as I turn the joystick, it's working, but there's no line there. You're not seeing any line. So that's how you would disable an axis within the software. So you, that's pretty cool. Also on the joystick page here, you can see, you know, the Cytec X55 comes with a number of springs, four in fact. You can see the values of those springs here. So if you want the lightest spring, like I use, that's the red one, that would be the lightest spring. The blue one is the stiffest spring, and there are the, the weights in between. So that's pretty cool. If you want, you can also click in here and calibrate the axes, like so, which will download to the uh, joysticks themselves their default axis configuration, effectively calibrating them and giving you a full range of motion if ever something goes wrong. Now it's saying sampling here, reconfiguring. When it's done, you should have a full range of motion from each of those axes. So that's how you recalibrate everything in there. So that's pretty cool. You do have curve settings in here. There are two types of curve you can apply to an axis. So if I want to change the x-axis, which is my roll axis, and make it a little bit more fine in the center, all you need to do, find the type of curve you want. So a J curve is best for a throttle, an S curve is best for a joystick axis, and then choose what you want. So I just inverted it by clicking those two, or I can click on S curve, here we are, and now I can actually change the curvature value. So what this means is, as I move the joystick to the right here quite a bit, you can see that where that um, crosshairs position is actually on the line, although I've moved the joystick quite a bit, it actually represents very small deflection on the control surface in the aircraft, and then it gets a lot more severe as we move it to the far edge. You can change that curvature by changing the number in here. So if I make this a crazy number like 2000, or even 1000, let's go back to 2000 if we can. Oh, actually 1,000 to the maximum. You can see that moving the joystick pretty much all the way has very little impact on the control surfaces now. Um, so that's how you set up curves. Pretty handy stuff. I'm going to undo all that. If I'm going to go back to the normal curve, I like a fairly flat curve here. And I do like to have a dead band. You can set a dead band so that just nudging the joystick does not alter the control surface of the, of the aircraft. So pretty simple stuff, pretty straightforward stuff. Um, it is what it is. I quite like it. Many people don't. You can also change the shape of the curve here, by the way, with the curvature line here rather than keying on a number at the top. You can just move that slider if you're so inclined that way rather than typing in numbers. Simple stuff. That's not really the meat of the whole software. We're going to get into the meat now, which is here, programming. Now, I actually have Black Shark running in the background here, and we're going to program some of the controls for the Black Shark. More to the point, though, I'm going to focus on some of what I call edge cases, some of the weird gotchas that are going to catch you out from time to time. So first of all, let me show you how to do simple key presses. So here's the joystick. I'm doing my Black Shark profile. I know that trigger here is going to launch my weapons. Now, I, I can't remember what the actual command is for launching my weapons, so we go to adjust controls. First thing you want to do in DCS, some other sims as well, it's actually clear what you've already got. So click on each of your Cytec columns here, go clear category, it won't delete your axis assignments, it just deletes your button assignments, that's what you really care about. So they are all cleared out. Now, in the Black Shark itself, we know that on the cyclic set, uh, cyclic stick, weapon release is there, right alt space, that's why it's kind of weird, right alt space. 
So let's go ahead and set that up. So this button, just click on it or press it on your joystick and it will highlight. We're going to set that in here as right alt space, weapon release. Do that and we'll call this weapon release. Now I'm, I'm going to use this button on the side of the stick to trigger cannon mode. So we'll click on that. We'll click in here C and type in cannon enable disable now we get to the edge cases the trigger I want my trigger to actually fire my cannon which is the space bar so I'm gonna click on trigger hit in here hit space bar and I'm gonna put in here fire cannon now what I can do is I can save this profile <clears throat> hit the profile button here which sends what I've just done to the joystick and then I can hit this little test profile here watch whoops see there's my mouse being pressed right there so hit the button on the side of the stick there's my C that's all great if I press the button on the top, it's weapon release. Good. Now, here's an interesting thing. I'm going to press and hold the trigger. Notice that you see a black, bold space and then a lighter space. That lighter space is key up, which means if I was actually going to use this in the Black Shark, pressing the trigger would basically go bump and fire one round and stop firing. That's not at all what we want. We want to hold that button down. I'll show you how to set that up. That's edge case number one, how to hold a button. So we go in here. We tell you now unprogrammed, and then we'll go into here and we'll say new advanced command. This is fire cannon. Now what you do, click on the first row, press. You've got three rows here, press, repeat, release. Press and hold the button that you want to hold. So in this case, spacebar. Now click on row two. It takes the key down symbol as well. Click on row three and release the spacebar. So that says when we press the trigger now, what you're getting is key down space. As long as you hold it down, you're repeating that space. When you release it, you've got key down, key up. And what we can do right now is right click and say quantize time and rem we'll remove any delays between any of these events. So they're all zero. Click on OK. Let's save this, profile it, and test it. So now I'm going to press the trigger on my joystick and hold it in. Space, 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 and then release the trigger, stop space. That's very important for a lot of sims, especially the Black Shark. Another area where that's most critical is actually the trimmer. Because the way you use the trimmer in the Black Shark is you press and hold the trimmer down until the aircraft is settled, then release the trimmer. So we're going to set this button here as trimmer. Click in here, press T. Actually, no, we don't. This needs to be an advanced command. So advanced command, we will call this trimmer. And that is going to be T and release. Click on OK. So the trimmer is now set. So far, so good. Now, the next thing we want to do is actually the Schwal. And that's going to work it's pretty much the same way, except we want these hats to be doing stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this hat down while uncaged the Schwal. Notice it's just come up as H2. There's no buttons that we can program. That's very easy to get around. Click the arrow. It will show you how the hat's currently configured. So it's currently an eight-way hat. We don't need that. We just need a four-way hat. So click it. And now click buttons. And then you get slots where you can enter the commands for every direction that you push that hat in. So down is going to be O and we're going to set that up as uncage Schwal. I'm going to use this point of view hat to the left to actually slew the Schwal image around. So click on that and the same thing. Point of view is currently set to an eight-way hat. We'll make it four-way. Click it once again and say buttons and now we have slots to enter all our buttons. Now I need these to be held down. If you actually look in, in the copy of the Black Shark, in fact let me save this profile it and go back to the shark. I'm going to move my hat down to Uncaged Schwal. There it is. Down the bottom of the screen there. And what you do is you press and hold comma, slash, period, and semicolon. That's how that works. Okay. They are press and hold. So let's go back into the Cytex software and we will set left here to be an advanced command. And this will be slew Schwal left. And that's the comma key. Again, quantize and save and then repeat and rinse and repeat and rinse and repeat over and over. So write new advanced command. This is the slash key, so slew schval write. This is slash. Quantize it. And away we go. I don't think I quantized my advanced command for the trimmer, did I? But it doesn't really matter too much for that. Now up, new advanced command, up is semicolon for the schwal, slew schwal up, 
So semicolon, hold that key down, click, click, release the key, quantize, and finally down, which is the period key. So new advanced command, slew schval down. I'm going to set this as a period key, so click in here, press and hold period, and release, and then quantize time. So that's how you set in press and holds on the various hats. And we can try that out very, very quickly now. Save it, profile it, back into the Black Shark. And if I move that point of view hat around now, you can see everything is working just the way it should. Next thing we want to do, here's another edge cache. Over here on the right hand side, this rotary, which is actually the bottom rotary, you see there's more rotaries up here. So this is the bottom rotary, changes the rate at which Schwal slews. It would be very handy to be able to do that with the rotary on the X55 throttle. Let's go and look at the commands for that. It's a little weird, it's something like Control Shift M and Alt Shift M. Let's go down here to S for Schwal. Schwal auto scan rate dial down. Left Control, Left Alt M, and then Left Control, Left Shift M. Wonderful, so let's go and set those up. This is going to be an interesting one. Not a lot of people realize how to do this, but it's actually very easy. Go to the throttle, find that rotary. There it is, rotary four. Now what we do is we set that up to be directional axis, which doesn't make any sense because a directional axis would be a directional axis in the game, but that's not the case. Directional axis, and we say that for the positive, it's going to be control shift M. I think that is increase Schwal scan rate and we'll set negative I think it's left alt control M now alt control M and we'll set this in here to decrease Schwal scan rate okay save it profile it let's head into the cockpit and I'm going to turn the rotary on my X55 now now it's actually the wrong way around I'm turning my rotary to the right but the knob is going to the left. And if I turn my, my rotary left, then the knob goes to the right. This is why you name your commands. It's very easy now to reset all this. Click on the, tr on the arrow for the drop down here. We'll change this to decrease. And then click on the arrow here and we'll change this one to increase. Save it. Profile it. Back in the cockpit. Now I'm turning the dial to the right. And there we go. So now I've actually got that dial, that rotary, in the cockpit responding to a rotary on my stick, on my throttle, which is amazing. Final edge case I want to show you. This is a really neat one. Over here, on the collective, in fact, it's not even on the collective, there is, I think it might be that. I could be wrong, but I think it's that. There is a command to change the tracking gate. Now, I know this is specific to the Black Shark, but it's going to apply to other aircraft you set up as well. Let me zoom in down here. The tracking gate is that dashed square here. You need to set that to the size of whatever it is you're about to lock up and blow up. It's set to the square bracket keys, and you press and hold them. You see that? So that makes it larger. That makes it smaller. I would like the top rotary on my um, throttle to do that. This is where it gets a little bit odd. Check this out. That rotary there, I would like to turn it to the right and that would be the right facing square bracket. Turn it to the left, that would be the left facing square bracket. The problem is it can't fire the keys quick enough for the, X, for the Black Shark really to pick them up. Um, it just doesn't work out very well. I'll show you what it does actually and then I'll fix it. So we go directional axis. So plus, I'm going to set this up to increase tracking gate size. Now I can't set that to a press and hold because it's a rotary so that doesn't make any sense. As you turn it it's going to repeatedly fire that key and we're going to have minus here as decrease tracking gate size. So far so good. Save it, profile it. Let's head into the copy. I'm going to turn that top rotary now. Nothing's happening. Oh there it goes. It triggered right at the end. It's not very fluid. I'm going to show you how to work around that, which is actually a pretty neat workaround. Set both of these to do nothing. You need to do that because it frees up the commands that we just entered, which means we can click on this arrow and then we can go in here and say delete unused commands and we have a number of commands here that are not currently assigned. So we'll get rid of those. They're gone. Next thing we do is change this to bands. Now I've got three bands here. 
This middle band I'm going to make to be just 10% of the movement. So from about 50% to 60%. There. If I wanted to add another band in here, I move the cursor until it turns into that solid black up and down arrow. Click and hold. That will add another band. We're fine for now. We just want these two bands. In fact, I'm a little bit odd here. That's 50%. That's only 40%, isn't it? So let's go and change this. That should be up to about 45%, which means that should be 55%. Now they're even. So 45% of motion on either one. Click on OK. Click on the top band. And just as before, we're going to do an advanced macro. So what we're going to say is, while we're in this band, we are going to decrease tracking gate size. Click in here. Hold down that left square brace and click and click and release. Quantize it. Done. So what that means is as long as this rotary is in the bottom 45%, it's going to repeatedly fire that left square bracket. So let's do the reverse over here. New advanced command. Increase. Tracking. Gate. Size. So click on this top area. Right bracket. Hold it down. Click, click and release. Quantize time. Get rid of all the delays. And save it do nothing for the middle one save it profile it let's go into the shark now if I move that rotary off center to the right now look oh how cool is that stopped it by moving it back to the center which has a detent so you know when it's centered now move it off center to the left that is very very nice indeed there's quite a lot more you can do but I think I've hit most of the edge cases here we've used bands here we've also used directional axes down here. There's other stuff you could do with bands incidentally. If you're in an aircraft that lets you specifically set the values on a rotary. So for example in the Black Shark, it doesn't really apply here but you'll get the idea. In the Black Shark there is a rotary there for the cannon. And I'm not sure if, if it's actually, whoops, press the wrong key. Let's try that once again. Oh my goodness, Frugal. There's a rotary right there down for the cannon. If you had individual keys for these positions, so movement, fix, manual, fail, nav, said it was key one, two, three, four, and five, yeah? Then you could set five bands on a rotary and say band one is press key one, band two is press key two, band three is press key three, and so on. And then again, you've managed to map a physical rotary to what was previously a series of ungainly key presses within the cockpit. Anyway, as I said at the start of the video, the X55 software is a rehashing of the basic SST software from SciTech, which some people don't like. I'm not a huge fan of it. I'm not um, so enamored of this software that I would tell people, you must use this software all the time. But it does do everything you need it to do, and it actually has quite a lot of flexibility, as you've just seen. We managed to set two rotaries up here to map two actual rotaries in the cockpit fairly easily and quickly. One other thing that's worth seeing, by the way, we're currently in mode one. There is a mode switch down here. If you switch that mode, it changes what all of these buttons do. If you want a function to flow through all the modes, it's very easy to do by changing the view. Click on view here, change it to grid view. Now, whichever mode I'm in, I want the trigger to fire the cannon. So we just drop this down, choose fire cannon, fire cannon, and the same on weapon release. Well, probably not so much weapon release, but definitely definitely the trimmer. I'm going to need that in every single mode. So we'll just choose this. This is why you name your commands. Periodically, make sure you click on this. Make sure you choose delete unused commands. It will show you anything that you've messed up and it's not currently assigned. Just delete the rubbish and you're good to go. That's all there is to it. As always, my name is Frugal. Thank you for watching. Hope this helped. See you guys soon.